You have to clap me for every time. You no, that, that that's 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 only at the end of the fringe. It's pers- yes, at the end of the fringe. What just happened? No, that's the middle of the fringe. <laughs> you have the end of the fringe. You have the show. Then you have the end of the beginning of the fringe. Then the end of the fringe. No, that's not how it works at all. It is now. <laughs> This be control structure, episode 135 for October 11th, 2017. This show has notes. Visit thenexus.tv slash cs135 to be seeing them with your peepers. I be old Bailey, and I'm proud to present the return of the Orifice. Hello, Andrew. Hi, Steve. How have you been? Um, you sound very clear today. It's, I, I am very clear today. It's almost as if you're sitting right next to I me. I know, these holographic projectors are getting better and better now. Yes. They even do sound now. Yeah. So, um, yeah, lots of stuff has happened in the three weeks or so. Something like three weeks. Yeah. I feel like it, it was one of, the, one of the weeks in there someplace. Yeah. So, um, guess who has 64 gigabytes of RAM? I'm guessing you, since you're asking. <laughs> yes. In your server or in your desktop? Um, right below us here. Okay, so this is for so you can run uh, about ten VMs at the same time. Let's uh, see. Perhaps you see Task Manager, and sixty-four gigs. Very, very nice. Is that maxing your motherboard out? Then I take it. Um, far as I know, it does. Okay. Till they come up with a patch or something. Maybe, but I mean, <laughs> it took me like a total of seven hundred dollars. To get all of this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm maybe questioning that a little bit, but um, I heard that RAM prices are going to keep going up so for you a while. Stock up on it when you can. Yes. So uh, I think with this, I'm good for maybe about ten years or twenty. Uh, I mean, depends on how fast uh, single thread performance increases. Sure. So um, if the past is anything to judge by, I would probably have this running as my main rig for about six years, mm-hmm. or seven, or how how long I uh, waited to upgrade the Sandy Bridge. So, um, yeah, and then I'll probably have that downstairs for another six years. <laughs> get get the, a good life out of it. Yes. So, um, uh, along with that, uh, speaking of uh, my server downstairs, I also got a UPS for that downstairs. So, um, yeah, now if the power blinks out for, like, 15 seconds, it'll still stay on. And then it goes off. Um, actually, I, according to the monitor program, it'll probably stay on for, like, two hours. Two hours? That's pretty good, actually. Yeah. So, um... I'm used to, like, the five minutes or something most of the time. Of course, that's with, like, a monitor and a few things like that. Yeah. Um, so, like, right now, it's just, you know, the system, you know, downstairs... Mm-hmm. So, uh, right now it's, uh, has about 5% load, uh, time left, 129 and a half minutes, <laughs> if it were to just to cut out. That's pretty nice. So, um, yeah, so, uh, then I decided to, uh, plug up the USB, so now, you know, it can have, you know, the computer can monitor its own battery, mm-hmm. and, you know, I was sort of leery about doing this, I mean, maybe that USB that thing that looks like a USB port is not really a USB port and if i plug it into mm-hmm. and if i plug it into my motherboard it'll shoot 120 volts through it <laughs> um, but um, as you can see the andrewbailey.com is still on so that didn't happen that's good <laughs> so you know i wanted to do it downstairs with that machine cuz i figured if that machine were to blow up it would not be as expensive no nope. <laughs> so then that gave me the confidence to do it up here and now my desktop has a battery meter. Very nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, then uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, about the same time, as far as other things, I went to my first block party. Block party? Yes. Is that like your neighbors? Yeah. Okay. It's where it's where like they barricade off the streets and like have a party in the street. 
Oh, so that's one of those things where you... Like try, a neighborhood. GPS is following directions, and then suddenly it comes to the street, and it's like, road closed, and you're like, oh, okay, I'll go right to the next street. And then you, your GPS is like, turn right, and it's like, road closed, and you go into the next street, and the GPS is like, turn right, and it's like, road closed, and it's just so annoying to pass you. Anyways, one of those. So it's where a neighborhood block decides to have a party in the street. So, um, let's see... Yeah, see, oh yeah, and then that day, I, you know, it, since it was a Saturday, I, you know, did my bike riding, mm-hmm. I came back, and that was, you know, I fired up the grill, and it was just then that, like, my shipment of soup came. Shipment of soup? From yeah. Amazon? Yes. Walmart? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, like, there's these huge giant cans of, like, 50 ounce, 50 ounces of cream soup. Would that be the number 10 cans? I don't know what 50 ounces is. I'm not sure okay. what number that is, but it's 50 ounces. And uh, Amazon had like a pack of 12 of those for like less than 100 bucks. There you go. So I bought those so I can like have all my casserole. Oh, because your casserole, your totter tot. Yes. Tater tot casserole takes the cream. Yes. Cream soup. Okay. Um, but unfortunately that came too late to include it in that batch of a casserole that I was making up then. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I also threw on some steak, which we, uh, just had. Um, so, and then, yeah, later on, I think it was like five o'clock that Saturday. Uh, you know, I made a few trips over because like the huge bowls of casserole. Okay. And it was the, uh, Cajun, uh, flavored casserole. Mm-hmm. And, uh, let's see, like, you know, I was over there for like maybe two hours or so, like one bowl had, you know, been, you know, scraped clean almost. So they must have liked it. So, but the other bowl was like still there. Okay. And like, it wasn't too long after that, that the guy is like, okay, you know, go ahead and take all the leftovers you want. And within like half an hour, the second bowl was gone. And they must have all liked it. Well, Excuse me, the contents, the contents of that, of that yeah, second Yeah, I thought about for just a second there. I was like, was the whole bowl got? Did they take your bowl too? I yeah, think? yeah. like I still have the actual bowl. That was nice of them to leave the bowl. Yes. So, uh, yeah, that that uh, seemed to be a, quite a hit. Like, people were coming up and, like, I remember one guy came up and asked. He was like, is this yours? It's like, yeah. It's like, dude, it's great. And then, like, everyone, like, I was talking to, mm-hmm. I asked, did you have any of that casserole, like, the tater tots? Uh-huh. It's like, yeah, I did. It was kind of good. It's like, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> <laughs> You're just fishing for compliments. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that that was a little fun. So then, uh, yeah, uh, let's see. Then it's kind of been a wild weather ride since then. So uh, then last week, uh, my... Let's see, my technical project manager, like the guy on the org chart above me. Okay. Uh, uh, and like another team member came out from Kansas City uh, last week uh, to work. Mm-hmm. You know? And uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, we had Primani. And then, uh, he, let's see, that was like the one night. Uh, no, no, that was like during, that was lunch during the day. Uh, but, uh, like the evening before, like the first night they were here, uh, my, uh, see, uh, Jeanette, my, uh, former boss, uh, she had this crazy idea of like having a, like team building activity, axe throwing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I have a throwing hawk and, and do that different times. I just thought there was an interesting office with software developers team building experience. <laughs> well, I'm not sure if it was like an official team building experience or just like an activity. So was it like a, a like a trust building thing where someone holds the target and someone throws the axe? Uh no, it was kind of I want to say sort of, it would kind of like be a, like a shooting range or something. Okay. But like imagine like uh like a barn uh like uh, horse stalls mm-hmm. or something. It kind of looked like that. Okay. So uh like there was like maybe about 10 stalls or so and they had like two targets uh in each of them. So, like, we pretty much paired up or something, but, like, they controlled is, like, who who goes against who and mm-hmm. stuff. So, uh, yeah, axe throwing, you know, like, literally putting the axe <laughs> over your head and throwing them forward. Well, there you go. So did you get it to stick? Um, some of the time. Some of the time, a, yeah. a disturbingly uh, low amount of the time. <laughs> yeah, I, tomahawk throwing 
I don't think was quite as so, well as the movies make it out to be. So, uh, like we, like usually like for a round or for a pairing, uh, we did like three rounds of five and I must've done like maybe five or six of those. So out of like a hundred throws, I got it to stick maybe 30 times. <laughs> okay. That's not too bad then. So it's hard to stick them. I got a bullseye like two or three times. So. That that was nice. So what was the person that did the best? What were they doing? Um, they, uh, I'm not sure because it was actually my uh, my manager, my Steve. project manager, not not Steve, uh, 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 Kansas Chris. Okay, Kansas. And Chris. and hi to all my listeners and out in the Kansas City metro area. Um, so eventually he he just like did it one handed and he was getting it. Hi, Steve. Like, he was getting bullseyes with that, and, like, I'm not sure, like, if the, if axe throwing is, like, a habit of his <laughs> or something. <laughs> so he practiced beforehand. So, uh, yeah. And then, like, the second night, both him and the other team member, they wanted to call it, like, an early night. Mm -hmm. So we just, like, walked around Mount Lebanon. Uh, so, like, there's, a, there's, like, a hotel up there in Mount Lebanon, like, right on 19. And, uh... So I'm like, hey, why don't we go over to uh, Rollers and see the uh, the triggers? So like the uh, the grills. Oh, those grills. Yeah. So the company that makes those grills is local then. Um, they sell local. Oh, uh, okay. Like like extremely local, as in like three blocks up from the office. Okay, that's kind of fun. The software you make is uh, connections to around that area. Yeah. So. Uh, Although connections to areas I've been, they're headquartered in Salt Lake City. And, like, that's where I went to college. And where you talk, Chris lives. Um, you lived? Well, let's see. Aside from college, he didn't actually live in Salt Lake. Uh, he lived, like, further south, like, yeah, way you south. branded the poor guy, Utah, Chris. Well, he, had, he lived in Utah for a long time, but Utah is a huge place, man. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you know, granted, you know, there's Salt Lake, and if he actually was from Salt Lake, he might have been Salt Lake Chris. Um, but yeah, like, he actually, he actually, like, grew up down in the uh, Cedar City, which is most of the way down to Vegas. Like, way down towards, like, the south edge. Okay. So, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, let's see, I forget what I was in there for, uh, like, way, way back when we first started, uh, working for Trigger. That I'm like, wait, isn't like these grills what we're, uh, you know, the company we're working on? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and let's see, I'm not sure if I've mentioned it on this podcast, but back when my brother came over, mm -hmm. um, so my parents came over as well. Yeah, it was like the day he first moved in that uh, we needed to like get keys duplicated. So we went to Rollers to, you know, do that. And, uh, you know, so, you know, we were just, you know, hanging out around the grills and, uh, some couple came in and I guess they asked me cause I was like standing closest to the grills and it was like, yeah, I actually like do the website for these people. <laughs> so I may have actually sold one. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, um, yeah, where, where was I? Uh, oh yeah. The, uh, the guys coming over. So yeah, we just walked around Mount Leb. Uh, and then now, uh, this week, was it not project managers, but like the account manager, uh, like see, like some other, like uh, business analysts, those kinds of people, uh, like there's four of those okay. guys out from uh, Kansas city now, or they just here for a visit and then going back or, um, kind of like they're all annoying Steve right now. So, so, uh, yeah. We're we're thankful that they're kind of distracting him and letting us do our work. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's that's fun. Uh, so, let's see. Well, I'll take that back. Three of them for are from the Kansas City area. The other one is like from like Cincinnati. Oh, okay. So he actually drove here. So, anyways, um, yeah. Uh, let's see. And then in the meantime, I've uh, played through uh, StarCraft Remastered. So this is like the first game that Blizzard has decided uh, to like redo a little bit, like redo the art and stuff, but like make it look as close as possible to the original, but like okay. pretty much up the resolution and lighting quality. It's just making it, it look better. It, it is functionally identical. 
like uh, for instance you command a group of units to go to the other corner of the map they might totally go off in another direction uh, or get stuck on something huh. just like the good old days so did they uh, pull from the same code base or did they from it? from what I heard they did oh nice so they just slapped a new UI on top pretty much and like replaced you know like the unit art and stuff and uh, like the backgrounds uh, as you can see, like I actually put that as my mm-hmm. wallpaper, uh, are pretty good, especially for a game that was originally released in the 90s. <laughs> so, uh, good thing for them. So, um, speaking of, uh, like lots of RAM and expensive toys, um, do you want a Tesla Model S, uh, but can't afford a more than $65,000 car? Um, how about a lot of work and... $6,500, because that's what someone actually did. Uh, so apparently this guy, I think, works at a junkyard. Uh, like, he has this YouTube channel and Patreon and stuff, and I think he might be from Boston. But, uh, like, apparently he found a Tesla that was flooded out. So, like, all the stuff inside was practically trashed, mm-hmm. but the body was still good. And then he had another Tesla that was wrecked. So, uh, like, he was able to salvage all the parts and, you know, move the good parts from the wrecked car into the flooded car that uh, had, like, no good insights into it. So, like, he uh, sold some of the parts, you know, some spare parts and whatnot, and he eventually got it going. Which is pretty neat, and uh, I was thinking about it there. Probably most people that have that car wouldn't really be uh, so much into uh, buying a junk one and then kind of fixing it up from it. So it's, he, he, he he did that. Yeah, he encountered a whole lot of trouble with it too, uh, because I think one of those cars was insured by Progressive, and apparently when Progressive writes off a car, like they do it in such a way that like you know it's like this car is done for; huh. it is never coming back. And when he went to, uh, like, get it uh, registered and inspected, apparently they have that there as well, um, <clears throat> that they needed to have, like, certain sign-offs mm-hmm. saying, yeah, this car was totaled, but this guy fixed it back up so you can run it again. Yes. So um, he had a little bit of trouble with that. And then um, apparently up until, like, last week or so, or last weekend, uh, he was riding it fine, and, like, the last... Uh, uh, YouTube video I saw was it breaking down and having to get towed back to his house. So, so not not quite so far what has been cracked up to be, but but it's still pretty. It, but it's a you know a fashionable electric car mm-hmm. for like you know seven thousand bucks. ever used c- cleaner i have used uh, that program before uh from way back when i remember remember using it on oh it would be windows 98 or something like that you just clean out all the all the the extra junk on the computer back when i had a 20 gigabyte hard drive <laughs> it was filling up pretty pretty good and so i was like well how can we get rid of all this stuff so you run c cleaner and uh, clean things out yes and uh as Buckface. uh annoyingly said once i hate it when people call it cc cleaner hey that's that's the way i've always pronounced it so <laughs> but let's 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 pronounce it a completely different way c cleaner <laughs> so um apparently it gave you something else to clean out like malware <laughs> so um for was it for like a few weeks like maybe like two weeks or so like a download of that was completely corrupted and bad and like who knows how many people have uh like downloaded it but yeah uh they have serious problems now the unless their software over the years has gotten a little more i don't know it, i guess it's kind of always been that way but it's just the the download model and kind of push you to get the new downloads and updates when the software at the core i don't know that there's really that much of a change that happens when you download updates i notice they push updates like all the time and i'm just lately i'm like i don't even want to update anymore because it's like what do you do you empty my trash can <laughs> do you really need updates well it's compatible with a new version of recycle bin 
Uh, uh, it's like updating the garbage truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, something we don't have anymore. <laughs> so, um... Hey, yes. <laughs> Yeah, you remember standing by for the garbage collection? Stand by for the garbage truck. Beep, beep, <laughs> beep, beep. Okay, we're good now. <laughs> or no, uh, was it uh, garbage collection? Yeah. Garbage collection, yep. So, yeah, got got to spend time for the garbage collector. So, uh, are you familiar with the options HTTP method? Mm, nope. What is it? It's, it's one of the more obscure ones that essentially... Uh, let's see. Uh, asking which other HTTP methods a resource or server supports. Uh, and the server answers with the allow header and gives a comma-separated list of the supported methods. Uh, apparently, Apache in certain configurations would leak memory with this. So, uh, this is not as devastating as, say, Heartbleed, um, because you would purposefully have to break it by... Uh, giving it HTTP methods, or was it setting permissions for HTTP methods that don't exist? I think that's what it was. Uh, what it was for, because this is this has been a while back. This is like one of the first articles in this podcast, so it's been around for a while. Um, yeah, this bug appears if a webmaster tries to use the limit directive with an invalid HTTP method. Uh, so. You know, due to its nature, the bug does not appear, you know, deterministically with probably a uh, default build or install of Apache. It only appears, seems to appear on busy servers at that. Mm. Uh, sometimes it only appears after multiple requests. So, you know, this is, you know, kind of a very specific, kind of obscure bug. But, uh, yeah, if you run Apache, take note of it. So really, it's only effectively messed up your mission file, it yeah. sounds like. Uh, but have you updated your DNS mask? DNS mask? Do you tell? Um, so apparently Google has discovered and revealed several, like, seven or so vulnerabilities in, like, the DNS uh, library that's used on Linux systems. Like, pretty much every Linux system, Linux install has DNS mask for, you know, like, DNS services and stuff. Mm-hmm. So... Um, yeah, this, this includes, you know, things like, you know, heap-based overflows and, uh, like, remote, uh, code execution vulnerabilities. Uh, you know, stuff that, uh, is quite bad and stuff that generally happens on Windows. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this kind of put me into a little bit of a panic because I haven't updated my router in a while. So I made sure to do that. You know, I observe International Backup Awareness Day for my router mm -hmm. and, uh, like, did, you know, a little update, and thankfully it held the configuration. So, uh, yeah, I'm good there, and, of course, you know, update my server as well. The server was the easy part. Uh, Just run updated. Yeah, because you can do it remotely, and, you know, if you updated it, you know, it's, it's generally still there. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, if you're, you know, logged into your server and trying to configure the router that is attached to the server, the one that you are connecting to, and something goes complete, you are kind of sold out of luck until you get back on site. <sighs> Anyways, uh, several thousand Chrome users, like 37,000, uh, have accidentally downloaded an Adblock, Adblock Plus extension that was totally fake and bad. Oh, wow. So it seems like this uh, Swift on security was uh, monitoring this or discovered this and started tweeting at Google uh, to, you know, take this down. And, uh, yeah, thankfully, you know, like not a lot of, you know, how should I say this? On the scale of Adblock Plus, not a whole lot of people fell for it. 37,000 people is a lot of people. Though. Yeah, it's still like a unacceptable amount but kind of a drop in the bucket compared to, like, the million or so users that Adblock Plus has. Um, so, yeah. It says the fake extension was created by a fraudulent developer who clones popular names and spams keywords. Indeed, it's pretty hard to tell that it's fake since the developer's name is Adblock Plus <laughs> and has a considerable number of reviews. According to one of the fake reviewers, uh, fake Adblock's reviewers, he started getting invasive ads that opened a lot of tabs after he installed it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Opposite of the intended effect. Uh, so speaking of browsers with extensions, Firefox. Firefox 56 uh, has been recently released, 
and it, it, it will be the last of the mainstream releases, not counting ESRs, that will run legacy extensions. So you mean the next one they're going to be turning on the threading and all that. Um, well, technically, fifty six already has all of that, but the next one is going to run all web extensions. So if you still have legacy extensions hanging around, like they won't work anymore mm-hmm. come November. Um, so the future is fast, and it's mu- it's moving to GPUs. Uh, so uh, like another sort of technical blog post that has those XKCD-ish cartoons uh, that explains, essentially, uh, how Firefox is going to break up all the work. And eventually, uh, you know, it says, you know, it's going to break off the compositing and uh, even the painting process of rendering a web page because, you know, you know, even for animations that, you know, kicks in those subsystems... Uh, and essentially moving the grunt work over to the GPU. And, uh, you know, eventually, you know, since, uh, like, you have, you know, essentially, you know, windows, you know, and, like, how the window is smaller than, like, mm-hmm. the web page and you need to scroll through it, you know, how you essentially create a huge, big web page in the back end and then you just, like, scroll... Just displaying a bit. Yeah, only displaying a little bit part of that, so it's, like, really fast, Mm -hmm. uh, with the, you know, obvious caveat that it uses a whole lot of memory, uh, because, you know, that page has been rendered in memory, you're just seeing just a little slice of it at a time. Um, But fortunately, GPUs are pretty good at uh, doing that. So it, you know, goes into, you know, the optimizations that they're doing for that, and, uh, yeah, really looking forward to this. That's pretty neat that they're plugging in closer to the hardware. So is that something that I wonder that Google's kind of got with Chrome, or Firefox is kind of on the front edge? Uh, it seems like it's on on the edge for this, um, because like they were really touting their uh, Servo CSS engine, uh, the multi-threaded CSS, uh, how was it, like the CSS object model processor or something, that, uh, you know, like the hard part of like going through the entire DOM of a page, you know, the object model of a page mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, assigning, uh, styles to that. So like, they were like really, you know, pushing that. And, uh, like another post, I remember they were talking about how, uh, Firefox breaks up the, uh, the work between processes and how like, it's more of a granular per, uh, per tab, kind of model versus Chrome, which is a per domain kind of model. Mm -hmm. So if you have like a whole bunch of tabs open for a single site, it'll slow down. Because it's all the same domain. Yeah. It's all in the same domain, thus all in the same thread or process or what have you. I feel like I remember talking about that once a few podcasts. Yeah. So yeah. Anyways, uh, hey, the future is already here. Uh, Java SE 9 has been released. Uh, So, you know, this is... You know, obviously an up- update from Java 8, uh, but uh, to note that this will not be an automatic update. Uh, you will have to go out and get it yourself. The automatic updater uh, will not automatically update you to Java 9. Um, I guess maybe for some backwards compatibility issues. So is there uh, anything from the, in the API that was added? Or, uh, know, like the well? big thing is Project Jigsaw, uh, which is like more of a modular uh the way of declaring what you're using uh, in your uh, Java project. Module. So kind of like NuGet packages equivalent? Kind of, yeah. That's good. I'm surprised that they didn't really have too, too much of that before. So, uh, but it looks like uh, other uh, places, other Java stuff is moving forward as well. Java Enterprise Edition version 8 has been released, along with Glass, Glassfish 5, uh, which I guess is the... Uh, reference implementation of uh, the Java EE8. So, you know, if you recall, I actually run uh, my blog on Glassfish. Mm -hmm. So, like, I remember pulling that down and putting that into my uh, development virtual machine, and it didn't quite work. So I'm not sure if, like, I need to, you know, properly configure it, like, from a fresh start because I poured it over my existing configuration. So I'm not sure if, you know, that's a, uh, you know, like a problem or not. Mm-hmm. So by reference implementation, it's just that they have tried to show out showcases, showcase the proper methods of using the new API. Pretty much. 
and they maintain it for it. Interesting. So uh, let's continue to talk about uh, Equifax. So uh, they need to get their stuff together. Uh, like, for instance, get and use domains that don't look sketchy as all get out. Or maybe don't get any domain at all and just use their obvious main Equifax.com domain. So uh, uh, Krebs here has uh, you know put, it, put in a post that essentially tears them to shreds for sending out an email from trustedid.com claiming to be Equifax. Which, which doesn't sound like Equifax to me. Yeah. <laughs> it comes from trustedid.com, but uh, the link they direct you to is trustedidpremier.com. That uh, makes it sound so much more legit. Yeah, that, that makes it sound so much more trustworthy, too. So, you know, using their obvious website would seem like a reasonable idea, right? Sounds like they uh, have some b arrow crappic issues. Let me guess, someone locked the servers in, in some ivory tower and hired the legions of hell to manage them. I mean, defend and deny access to. I wonder what would have happened if whoever stole their data also defaced the website. At this rate, they would probably move to another domain. So, yeah. So Krebs kind of goes on and investigates where this came from, and apparently it was a company that sold services to lock your credit. And Equifax bought them out, I don't know, like maybe three years ago, I think it says. Uh, so I guess they're like, hey, we have this domain lying around that we're not using <laughs> Let's anymore. Let's just use it. <laughs> so I don't know about the whole trusting the, the credit companies to lock your credit score after like they, they give all the information away. It's like, okay, so I'm going to sign up for your credit monitoring service and give you my information again. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's try to make the s- smallest Android app that just you know puts Hello World onto the screen. And this apparently is 1.5 megabytes that in is size. Pretty good size for Hello World. Um, pretty good. You mean pretty bad? Pretty, pretty good as in like big. Like how bloated can you get? Uh huh. So um, let's this this guy here shaves it all the way down to 2K. Uh, <laughs> the majority of it uh, apparently the build has some kind of minimizer which cuts the size in half and then uh like there's apparently some compatibility stuff and like some styling uh that uh he took out and got it down to about 108k which you know is already a substantial amount you know down from there uh but you know uh, designers would you know cry everywhere because it uses the default operating system theme (laughs) and it's not a pretty blue uh title bar or what have you up there uh, and then, like, he cuts out the icons down to, like, a one-by-one one pixel black dot, uh, which gets it down to about 7K. And that's where I would say, okay, that's that's fine. Like, I could live with an app that's, you know, this, uh, I guess, small, mm-hmm. large-ish. That's not too, too bad. Uh, but then, you know, continues to go through and squeeze it uh, by, you know, manually, you know, declaring text views and using system icons and like a whole other stuff like saving bytes from like the uh, manifest files and metadata uh yeah like the last quarter of this post is him just taking off bytes like (laughs) a few dozen at a time oh there's a space in that file let's take it out (laughs) or or we can uh exploit the redundancy and compression algorithm so let's you know put in you know repeated letters everywhere so how does how does putting in more repeated letters make it choose to compress it more i wonder uh let's see not understanding the manifest let's enter dummy characters throughout the manifest file then attempt to install the apk without changing the file size this will determine whether a chuck sum is in place or if our changes invalidated the offsets within the file header surprisingly the following manifest is interpreted as a valid apk on a Nexus 5X on, on Oreo. I think I can hear the Android framework engineer responsible for maintaining the binary XML parser screaming very loudly into a pillow. And to maximize our gains, we're going to replace these dummy characters with null bytes. This will make it easier to see the important parts of the file in Hexfiend, and also gain bytes from our earlier 
um, compression hack. So in other words, there's certain parts of the file that it doesn't actually read when it deserializes. So he's saying you can just replace those bytes with nothing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he, he pretty much, you know, scrapes the bottom of the barrel with this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that would not work uh, for, like, any other kind of program. <laughs> so a refresh button is kind of useful, despite what Steve Jobs said about fewer controls being better. So uh, Tim Bray, which I think is, like, one of the guys behind XML. Hey, we were just talking about XML. Yes. Uh, has come across a car sharing app. I'm guessing it might be one of the popular ones. Uh, this car sharing app that doesn't have a refresh button, but has problems having up to date data. And he, you know, essentially goes on a rant saying, you know, hey, I really need this app to have, you know, the latest stuff, but I don't want to exit it and have to wait uh -huh. for everything to get back in. You know, just having something I could press to make everything okay again would be great. Yeah, it's kind of an essential feature on like web browsers and stuff. Even even someone who's making the point of how people uh, you know want to think that oh their app's going to update itself and things like that, but in reality websites mess up and things like that. So you really yeah. refresh. Dear project managers, uh, product managers rather, show some humil humility when a customer really thinks your app is wrong and they know how to fix it. Don't get in their way. So the guy who co-founded the Motion Picture Experts Group, also known as MPEG expresses some frustrations over what it has become. So uh, he goes over how, you know, like the business has, you know, gotten into everything and like lawyers and patents and stuff and kind of looks back and wonders what went wrong because he says, you know, he wanted uh, like 30 years ago, he had this vision of, you know, people communicating on computers and everything, uh, making real the vision of humans finally free to communicate without barriers and sharing more and more rewarding digital media experiences. Uh, so, first remarks is that my endeavors are driven by the hand of God, and that tens, hundreds, and thousands of people have made MPEG what it is recognized for, the originator of standards that have changed the lives for billions for the better. And then, like he goes on, you know, essentially, this is this whole post is centered around him receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award uh, for his work on MPEG. Uh, the second remark concerns the word lifetime in the name of the re award. Uh, this sort of implies that my professional lifetime has been observed in its entirety. I hereby communicate that I do not intend to retire anytime soon. Um, so MPEG demon demonstrably achieves the first, technical excellence, but, in charge but those in charge of the second, commercial exploitability, perform less and less. Indeed, MPEG approved the HVEC standard in 2013, but prospective users must negotiate with three different patent pools and a host of individual holders to get a license. <laughs> These are standards that will never see the light of, or if they do, will not be used because the standards organizations have been unable to update their processes from the time they dealt with standards for nuts and bolts. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> this is why things like, uh, you know, like patent-free codecs uh, will probably win out in the end. You know, people have just gotten a little too greedy, mm. and, like, patents and stuff have proliferated. Let's do some appreciate and deprecate, and uh, because I have 64 gigabytes of RAM, a RAM drive might be useful. That would be very useful. Yes, for instance, to hold the uh, like the hard drive image uh, of a virtual machine. So is the VM very snappy uh, being hosted on the? VM? Yes, and then I realized you know managing a, vir a uh, uh, yeah, virtual uh, RAM drive might be a little uh, uh, iffy and a little bit uh, you know because if you don't save it before you uh, <laughs> shut down your machine. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Uh, but I think this might actually uh, like automatically save and restore everything uh, because I noticed like uh, when I was booting once that uh, it took a little while. Oh, so, so it was pulling from the hard drive. Yeah. Right? So I would like to appreciate IM Disk, uh, which you know is is essentially a RAM drive for Windows. I thought before it worked, it would be neat to mount a RAM drive 
and because our application is so big, uh, the one application is anyway, and put the source code and the build files in that drive. That way, then as you build it, it's building from RAM to RAM. Yeah, this has the opportunity to you know get you know give you quite a bit of speed. So, uh, and I would like to deprecate Microsoft Outlook um, because just this afternoon at work. I must have like dragged some kind of file over uh, the Outlook window, and then it just like locked up. <laughs> and like after about two minutes or so, it like completely uh, like stopped responding and everything. Mm-hmm. And so like I had to you know force close it, and then it's like okay, well let's open it again because like I need to see email. So uh, I did that, and then like it must have been like the main database file was corrupt or something. Uh, wonderful. Or, like, there's problems with that. So, yeah, Outlook crapped the bed. So the other day, I was using Outlook, and it just randomly, it's like, can I access the calendar or something? Like, it wasn't, it didn't say calendar, but it was some file name that kind of sounded like it. Because someone else is using it. I'm like, of course someone else is using it. You're using it. So I <laughs> shut, I tried playing with it a few times. It wasn't working. So finally, I shut the program down, turned it on again, and it worked. And I've yeah. had, uh, was the other one, sometimes it'll just come up, like, the whole thing's blank. It's, like, rebooting the whole computer fixes it, but it's just, like, there. There's something weird it does with formatting, too. It's, like, I forget it's copy and paste or something. It's, like, some key combination isn't what you think it should be. I think what it is. Uh, I don't know. But, yeah, that's kind of a weird program. And then another thing is that, you know, whenever I come in in the morning, I have, like, 30 uh, alert emails from, like, all the uh, production environments and stuff. So, like, I go delete, 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 mm-hmm. delete, delete, and then suddenly it, like, flips up to the top where, like, emails because I added actually... a new one? Well, not even that. Like, I'm not sure if it refreshed or something. Oh, okay. But, like, the emails that, you know, were just sent to me that I actually want to read, yep. it selects those. It's so delete. I have to be careful because if I hit delete on those, I have to go through my deleted item stuff. <laughs> so, like, it doesn't even keep track of what's supposed to be selected. Yeah, it looks a bit special. Yeah, like short bus special. So uh, I have something to appreciate. The other day I saw a sell on Amazon for these vertical mice. Can you uh, speak into the Microsoft? I, I can speak into the Microsoft. Is this better? Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Anyways, so this vertical mouse that was on sale on Amazon, I got it and it kind of looks like this sideways thing. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And it actually feels pretty nice. Like I like it because when you hold a normal mouse your hand kind of twists funny and you tend to want to put like an angle in your wrist but then with this vertical mouse your hand is like an up like almost you're shaking hands the uh-huh. same angle and you just kind of grip the mouse like that and it's pretty neat i like it it's uh but someone at work was telling me that gamers are starting to kind of push them for gamers uh because it's quite a bit better for your hand is what some people say i don't know this is i haven't seen too too many of them before than this one brand but it does seem like it's a really nice mouse mm. as far as just how it feels in your hand so yeah that was Positive experience in that so far. So um, if you would like to submit some feedback uh, for this show, go ahead and do so on the Nexus.tv, especially on our uh, uh, on our show notes page. And uh, thank you, Buckface. Uh, uh, I got your message about the, uh, the international uh, Talk Like a Pirate Day. Like, apparently it's, like, his mom's birthday or something. Oh, nice. So, so his mom can talk like a pirate on her birthday? I um, guess. Pirate, uh, not a parrot. <laughs> it's like, wait a second, wrong one. Well, I mean, parrots go along with pirates. They could talk like a pirate, too, I suppose. Since what? they're on the pirate's, you know, <laughs> shoulder or something. Yeah. So so another thing that I uh, uh, noticed is that uh, recently my uh, motherboard got another BIOS update. Oh, so uh, there was something with the RAM you were trying to set the yeah. speed up higher or something. Yeah, so... Um, turns out I couldn't do that, uh, uh, but, you know, I was able, you know, to get it at the, you know, speed I have at before, uh, 2800 megahertz, as opposed to the 3200 on the, uh, box of the RAM. So, you know, I got the, uh, other RAM. Uh, the good news is that it does not run any slower. Does not run any slower. That's good. Despite having more RAM. Despite having more RAM. I... And I noticed it's using up about five gigs, so that would be good for your drive because you can you can really leverage it. That's a good way to to use that much RAM. Yeah, you can install. I guess you can install whole whole OSs in that. Yeah, like there's a lot of possibilities there. Definitely. 
um, you know, just, you know, put in like a Linux, uh, without a, without an X server or anything. Hmm. And then like get it really tiny and small. Um, but yeah, so, you know, generally when you add more RAM, you know, your RAM kind of slows down because, you know, there's more chips to process and yeah. stuff, you know, to send data out to, but thankfully that did not happen. So at least I'm happy with that. <laughs> yes, that's good. So, um, yeah. So let's see. Uh, in two or so weeks, I will be uh, going over to Ohio and uh, going to a pumpkin show. Oh yes, I remember you. You went to that last year. Yeah, yeah. that's the one where they had the g- giant pumpkins. Am I remembering that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do so, they launch pumpkins there too? Where they shoot them and stuff? I don't know. Maybe yeah. I've never. I've, re- I've heard tell of that. That would be kind of neat to see. Yeah, yeah. This uh, mythical, you know, pumpkin catapult thing. Yes, I I don't believe it. It, it's to- it's fake news, okay? <laughs> it's fake. Um, so, but we're still going to make pumpkins great again. Believe me. So, um, I guess, uh, yeah. You also bought a house. I I did buy a house. That's falling over, but that's okay. Maybe <laughs> we'll see. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. So, like I heard you say that uh, the bank only appraised the land. Because appraising the house too would drag the value down. Well, they did, they appraised everything, and the appraiser said the land, the value is in the land. They said the house detracts from the value of the land. So, so they the bank it was a farm bank, so that was the only reason why I got the loan, probably. So, like, is this place condemned or something? It wasn't condemned. <laughs> But don't don't have them come look. <laughs> I'm I'm fixing it up. So all right. So um yeah. With that, I guess I won't be coming over to crash at your place. G- give it a little bit, then eventually. Yeah, uh, I might have to go over and uh, crash at uh, uh, Cleveland Chris's place. Ah, that Chris. Okay. Yeah. Uh, slash Michigan Chris. Michigan Chris. Someplace Chris. Chris. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, yeah, with that, have a good one. You too.